Okay, this is going to be the first video on the interval of convergence of a power series. And as a first example, we'll use this one right here. Now, when you're trying to find the interval of convergence, the idea is that for certain values of x, the series is going to converge. For other values of x, the series is going to diverge. And your job is to find out uh, for which values of x the series converges. Now, when you do this, um, the ratio test will be the dominant test to find what's called the radius of convergence, which will give you the interval in which you can find x's that uh, the series will converge in. So you're going to need to use the ratio test. So before we go on to the rest of this, let's do a, just a quick review of what the ratio test looks like. Now, I'm assuming in this video that you've already used the ratio test and that you're pretty familiar with it. And if you're not, you might want to back up, first of all, and watch the videos on the ratio test just to remind you of how to do this. And what the ratio test says is this. If you have a series and it has non-zero terms, if you find this limit and the limit is less than 1, then you can show that the series converges. Um, if you find the limit and the limit is greater than 1, then the series diverges. And finally, if you find the limit and the limit is equal to 1, then the ratio test fails and you'd have to use some other test. Well, primarily we're going to be concerned with this first one up here. We want to find the limit and we want to find where that limit is less than 1. Because where the limit is less than 1, then the series converges. So that will be our goal in this video. So that's just a quick review of the uh, ratio test. Now, <clears throat> as you solve the problem, it's going to look something like this. I'll put a little bit more in the way of a series of steps up here. So the idea is we're going to use the ratio test. Now here's the ratio test right here. <clears throat> as you find this limit, there's really only what I call three possible outcomes. So if you find this limit, it's either going to be equal to zero, <clears throat> it's going to be equal to infinity, or it's going to be equal to some fixed number. And it, you can interpret it like this. If the limit's equal to zero, that tells you that the radius of convergence is infinity, and the series converges uh, from negative infinity to a positive infinity. If the limit's equal to infinity, that means that the radius of convergence is zero, and the series only converges at the single center point, x is equal to c. And the last possibility, if the limit is equal to some fixed number, then the radius of convergence is equal to some fixed distance r, and the series converges in whatever that interval is. So it's got to be one of those three possibilities. So the first step is just go ahead and use the ratio test to evaluate this series. And again, the way the ratio test works, the denominator is the original function. The numerator is just the original function with all the n's replaced with an n plus 1. So let's go ahead and write these things in here. First of all, I'll put the denominator first. <laughs> so the denominator is going to be, um, and it's just going to be x to the 3n, to the 3n, divided by um, 2n factorial. So just your original function. Now in the numerator, it's the same thing, but wherever you've got an n, replace it with an n plus 1. So this is going to be x. Then I've got 3, and again, in parentheses, in place of that n, I'm going to put an n plus 1. Then uh, it'll be divided by <coughs> 2, and again, in place of the n, put an n plus 1, but remember to put it in parentheses. So n plus 1 in parentheses, that in parentheses, and the whole thing divided by this. So just everywhere you have an n, replace it with an n plus 1. And from here on out, it's just a matter of running through the ratio test. And you've done this, uh, hopefully, several times in the past. So let's go ahead and do that right here. We'll put the limit um, as n approaches infinity. And then it's got an absolute value. And I'm going to do the following. Um, I think I'll come across here and do this. I'll make it be uh, this one. Now, like any fraction, you'll invert and multiply. So we'll go ahead and write this one. But as I write it, I'm going to do the following. First of all, I'm going to distribute that 3. So this will become x to the 3n plus 3. That's if you distribute this 3 up here. Then I'll also distribute this 2. This would become uh, 2n plus 2 factorial. So distribute that to across this one right here. Then you'll have times, and then we'll uh, invert the denominator and change it into multiplication problem. So this will become 2 to the n factorial divided by x to the 3n. And then here's the absolute value over here. 
So you change it from a division problem into a multiplication problem. Now the next step is really just a matter of what I call expanding this thing. So what I'm going to do, I need to have some things cancel out. <clears throat> so I'm going to change this thing, and I think I'll do it in blue here. I'm going to change this into x to the 3n times x cubed, because <clears throat> that's what this is. So change this into this, and I'll go ahead and cross that part off. Now, this one I also want to write in expanded form, <clears throat> so I'm going to write it as this. I'll write it as uh, the first term would be 2n plus 2. Then the next term in the factorial would be 2n, remember you subtract 1, so this would be 2n plus 1. And then the next term would be 2n, and all, as a matter of fact, all the remaining terms would be 2n factorial. So you'll take this and write it like this. So there's the first term, there's the second term, and you want to stop when this one agrees with this one because that's going to allow you to cancel things out. So we'll scoot down a little bit more. Okay, that's going to give the limit as n approaches infinity of, and I'll stick the absolute values in here, and not what I wanted, so we'll go here and absolute values. <clears throat> now again, certain things will cancel out. Let's see what happens on this one. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is this. On this one, this 3n right here, or x to the 3n right here, will cancel out this x to the 3n right here. This 2n factorial right here will cancel out this 2n factorial right here. So the only thing that's left in here will be the following. <clears throat> um, I've got this x cubed. And in the bottom, I've just got these two terms right here. So this will become 2n plus 2, and this is going to be 2n plus 1. So you've got it simplified down to that. <clears throat> now what that's going to be, this is going to be the limit. And this is a little trick that I like to use, just because... Um, when you find the limit, some students are a little bit confused if you have combinations of x and n in here. Now, the variable in this thing is n, <clears throat> so you can treat the x cubed as a constant. And remember, whenever you find the limit of a constant, you can bring the constant outside the limit. So I'm actually going to write this like this as two things here. I'll write it as, uh, this is going to be 1 over 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1, and... I'm going to take this x cube and bring it to the outside as its own absolute value. Now again, the reason I can do that is I really just want to find now the limit of just this part right here. And that's just got n's in it. And then I'll just keep this x cube by itself. Now what this one's going to be, <clears throat> you should recognize, um, as we go down, um, as n goes to infinity, this term is going to go to infinity, this term is going to go to infinity, you'll have 1 divided by infinity, um, that whole thing will go to 0. So you have 1 divided by an extremely large number, so you've got that, then the whole thing times uh, x cubed. Now again, this is what the limit is. So the limit is equal to this. Now 0 times anything gives you 0. So you wind up with the limit the original limit is equal to zero. Again, by the ratio test, what you want to know is this. What is this limit, for what values of x, is this limit less than one? And you can put a little question mark above that. So for what values of x is this thing less than one? And then the logic goes like this. Uh, no matter what you pick for x, if you multiply it by zero, it's going to be zero. Zero is always less than one. So zero is always less than 1. Uh, <clears throat> so you can pick any x you want to. So what this means is that the radius of convergence so the radius of convergence is equal to infinity. So you can pick any x you want to, the radius of convergence is equal to infinity. And the final answer to the problem then would be this. You wanted to know for what values of x does this thing converge, and the interval of convergence would go from a negative infinity all the way out to a positive infinity 
and you'd be done. So again, if the limit turns out to be zero, let's move back up and look at our rules up here. That was this case right here. You had a case, the limit turned out to be zero. Therefore, uh, the radius of convergence is infinity, and the series converges for all x. So that means you can pick any x you want to, and this series will converge for them. So just kind of keep that in mind. This is a case of the first one where the limit is equal to zero. Now, in the next problem, we'll take a look uh, where the limit is equal to uh, infinity. But again, follow these steps, and you should come out with this right here.